Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Today's program, a species profile requested from a YouTube uh, listener or watcher, uh, wanted me to talk about house finches. They're, house finches are a fascinating story. Um, depending upon what part of the country in, you are in, you may have a lot of them. You have may have a few of them. You may see populations go up and down on them. And there's an interesting history uh, as far as this bird goes across the country, and some it is loved by many, it is not loved by others, and so we'll talk about that as well. And they are subject to an eye disease uh, that we are going to discuss, and why they are subject to that eye disease. And of course, what to do if you happen to uh, see one of your feeders that has that. So the house finch, one of my favorite. Uh, First uh, scientific names I learned uh, back in college, it was Carpodicus mexicanus. Uh, it is not Carpodicus mexicanus anymore. Uh, unfortunately, they changed it. Uh, now it's uh, Haemorus hey mexicanus. But that scientific name, that species mexicanus, uh, gives you insight into that bird's history and its origin. So let's go ahead and bring up... Um, one of our the, the birds here. There he is. Uh, there is a male house finch. Uh, and one of the things that uh, is noticed, I mean, they, they are common bird feeder birds. And whenever I first moved here to Missouri at, about 32 years ago, we were just starting to see house finches in our area. I mean, good numbers. And I remember um, people would call on the phone. They'd want to know what the bird was. And they would say, it looks kind of like a cross between a cardinal and a sparrow. And that's a pretty good description. And house finches, the males, this bird here, has red on his head, and it'll have a red on its rump, and it'll have varying degrees of red on his chest and head and down its back. Some will be very pale, and some will be very... Uh, it, it, it are very deep and a lot of red in them, which of course uh, will lead to confusion with uh, the, its look alike, the purple finch, which we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. But first off, male, female. So the, they, these birds are, are sexually dimorphic, meaning you can tell the males and females from um, their appearance. And this is a female house finch. And this uh, it, it is Miss Plain Jane, as I like to call her. Uh, she is all just gray, brownish stripes without the red compared to him, of course, who has the, the striping on the chest like she does and on the flanks, but she, he, the red in the head definitely separates her out for her, uh, from her. And one thing I want you to look at real quick here um, is I want you to look what's called the Coleman, which is the, whenever you're looking at the bill, um, it, the, 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 the shape between the upper mandible and the lower mandible, this one has a sharp down curve toward the, the against the skull, and then it kind of goes up and then straight. And that's something that's good to identify birds sometimes with. Uh, and so that, that curved Coleman on a house bench is, is pretty distinctive. But over the years, and I have whole videos on this, and I'll definitely put a link in uh, for that, and that is how do you separate a purple finch from a house finch? Um, and uh, here we have the house finch on the right, the male house finch, and the male purple finch on the left. And when you see them at the same time at your feeder, the, the identification is not difficult. Uh, so the, the, the purple finches are huskier. Um, they, to me, they always look like they've been uh, taken by their feet and dunked in raspberry Kool-Aid uh, versus the house finch where he's red, he's red, and where he's brown, he's brown. Uh, and that's a real good di differentiation for them. And another thing that is easy for most people in the country is if you see this bird during the breeding season and most of the lower 48 states, as far, especially as further south you go, it's definitely a house finch because the purple finches are northern nesters. They, nor they, they nest much further north um, and they invade in certain years uh, into the lower 48, but not many of them breed very in, in the south as much. So the, the house finches and, and the house finches are very urban now. They nest in hanging baskets on your uh, front door and in, in your front porch. They like to nest in the tip top of an evergreen, uh, small evergreen tree is another favorite place of theirs, but they are quite common in cities. 
but they have a really interesting history. Well, that, and and how they got to where you live may be different. So house finch, purple finch differentiation. We're going to just talk about house finches. Like I said, I have a link for the, the how to separate the two. This is a very interesting picture. Just want to show you real quick before we move on. Uh, it, it, and that is uh, there's a purple finch here in the foreground. There is a house finch right here to the right, far right. And in the middle, there's a funny looking bird with a more orange face than a red face. And that is a house finch. It's known as an orange variant house finch. And here's a, a better picture of one. Uh, and it has, they feel like it has to do with diet and that they don't, not all of them will be bright red, the pigment being influenced by what they eat uh, too. So that, and they can also be pretty much a yellow color. I mean, this, this is one that is really washed out here. They've got the more of a yellow pigment uh, versus the orange pigment versus the red pigment. So uh, same bird, just three different slightly uh, color tones to them. Um, and those, uh, it, it, it's fascinating. It's a, it's a genetic thing and it's very cool and, and, and a diet thing. Uh, but where do you live? And have you always had house finches? Well, how this story goes is the house finches with that name Mexicanus tells us that it was originally confined to the desert Southwest and in New Mexico. And they have a beautiful song. I'll play it for you. This is from the Sibley's app on my phone. I'll play this. So they have a beautiful song and people love to hear them sing. And so back at the turn of the last century, uh, late 1800s and early 1900s, because they loved to hear them sing, they kept them as cage birds. They all they had the nickname Hollywood finches uh, because of the desert southwest, of course, where they were from. And they bought they would capture them and keep them in cages and keep them in their houses because they loved to hear the males sing. Well, when they did that, of course, they expanded in the pet trade. So they sold them in all over the country as Hollywood finches. Well, whenever uh, laws were at the, the, the turn of the last century, when we finally passed laws to protect native birds from being captured and being kept in, in captivity as cage birds, and they had to be set free, when they set all of these uh, house finches free into the wild, back into the wild, uh, that only not only did they do that in the Southwest, they did it all over the country. Well, there was a population of them so big in the New York City area that there was a big enough population that these house finches were able to form a breeding population. So people on the eastern seaboard and the eastern three-fourths of the country really didn't know what these birds were. Uh, and they started breeding and they started populating and they started expanding. Now, the reason the, the, the Western birds down in the desert Southwest had been confined to that area for their evolution is that they had the desert and the Great Plains were keeping them from crossing over into the Midwest and into the Southeast and to the Northeast. So they had been confined down there. So, but about the same time that these, these birds were populating up in the Northeast and expanding westward, then urbanization happened in the de out west. And so these the house finches started expanding from the west to the east because they could make it to another city and then it formed a breeding population there and then make another one. Well, uh, this was happening. These two populations were in, in closing in on each other, one from the east and from the west. And the meeting point was like central Kansas. Uh, you know, it, it, so it's believed that in, in my area, the Kansas City area, that it, we mainly have birds that originated in the eastern population, and the birds came from the west, and they met pretty close to here. That's why in 1993, when I first moved here, people were calling and saying, what's this bird? We had never seen it before. So it took that long for these birds to, to, to meet up, and now they're all one population spread across the, the, uh, the U.S. Now, there, when there is a bird introduced into an area, like these birds were and started and populating in, in the Northeast, there tends to be problems with birds that were already there. And for people who fed birds, the, the conflict came with goldfinches. 
and people were really upset that uh, these redbirds, these house finches, were, were chasing away their goldfinches from their feeders, and they didn't like that. So they wanted to know what what can we do? Why why you know these birds? They're bullies. They're chasing my goldfinches away. And this picture is really interesting. I want you to concentrate on one bird in this picture, and he's about dead center. He's a goldfinch is upside down, clinging to this mesh. What they figured out. Uh, the bird feeding people in the Northeast is that house finches don't like to hang upside down. They uh, to feed so, and goldfinches will hang upside down all day long. They don't mind. And so that's when they invented the upside down finch feeder. And I can put a link in for that as well down in the description below. And that is why some feeders are upside down. Finch feeders are upside down. And that was the anti house finch feeder. And that was to keep those house finches from, out competing uh, their beloved goldfinches. And, you know, it It depends. You People love them. And then there's some people who prefer the goldfinches. What I have found, uh, rather than needing an upside down finch feeder, when I get the, when the house finches build up in my area, I find that safflower is the answer. Uh, they love safflower seed. So, if you feed them safflower, if you offer up safflower, cardinals love safflower, blackbirds hate it, squirrels hate it, uh, even house sparrows hate it. But if the house finches, if you have a lot of house finches, and especially if you want to keep them off of your Niger feeders or away where your goldfinches are feeding, give them a sacrificial lamb if you want a tube feeder or a tray feeder with lots of safflower in it because the house finches absolutely love it. Remember, safflower has a very hard seed coat and little goldfinches can't crack it open. But remember that first picture or the second picture I showed you of the female uh, with with her, that curved Kuhlman in her bill that I'm showing that right here, she can crack open really hard seeds and he can do it too. So they do love, now this feeder is feeding fine sunflower chips, which he doesn't have to crack open. Uh, and they're definitely going to love that. But if you want to it, cut down on the competition with your goldfinches, safflower is, is the answer. And they absolutely love it. Now, here we're going to get into some of the, the, the science here. <laughs> and that is um, because those birds from the east, the, the ones that were released from, from captivity, it was such a small population of birds that started and bred. And all those birds came from that very small original group. They don't have the genetic diversity in their, in their system uh, to fight off things, to fight off certain diseases. And if you're familiar with, they talk about this with cheetahs and other animals that are endangered species that get uh, populations that get so low that they don't have the genetic diversity uh, probably to survive long term. Well, now that these birds are getting together, it's a bit better. But this eastern population that we see a lot has a, a real vulnerability to this con conjunctivitis eye disease. And if you can see how crusty the eyes are on this, this male house finch, um, and it's sad when you see them. They, if you see them out on your feeder, they are pretty much blind and start with one eye, then both eyes, and they rarely survive. Um, the, the, some people will try to take them to rehab centers and stuff, but once they have it, it is very hard. I got another picture here. Um, and But the reason they're vulnerable to this is because of that origin of theirs from that Eastern population. There's not enough genetic diversity to fight off this eye disease. And typically what happens when a disease breaks out in a population of animals, um, the, the ones that are weak to it die, and the ones who uh, are, are have can fight it off, survive, and pass those genes on to their young, well, the population was so, so low of these house finches that it, they were not able to do that. They didn't have enough numbers to pass that along uh, to, to be able to fight that off. And that's why we see those birds turn up. And, and usually it happens whenever house finch populations get really high. And that is, you know, they, they, uh, they breed and their population grows in an area. And then you look, then, then you, and people will call and say, where all my house finches go? Well, that's probably because of a crash in the population uh, to, due to the, like the conjunctivitis breaking loose and it going through that area population. So when we look at population graphs for house finches, they look like this. 
they vary over time. Uh, you have peaks and you have valleys where they, they get knocked back and then they build back up again. Now, where those the, the Western population are, are, don't have the vulnerability to it. And so with them interbreeding with the Eastern populations coming here, that'll build those numbers up. But the, the Far Eastern population probably have the worst one. Now, if you see a bird with conjunctivitis at your feeders, it is very important that you take down your feeders and clean them really good and make sure you use a 10% bleach solution to kill any of that bacteria that can be passed on uh, to those other uh, birds at your bird feeders. It is rare for it to turn up in other birds. I, I, I do know that it has been documented in, in chickadees and, 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 and downy woodpeckers and, uh, and gold, goldfinches. There's, there's certain birds that have shown it but again their population diversity is high enough they tend to fight it off and it disappears it doesn't go spreading like wildfire through them like it does with the house finches so um, uh, the house finch a fascinating bird uh, they, you know originally down desert southwest moved to the east coast met in the middle kind of a fun story um, like i said some people don't like them because they are bullies for their to their goldfinches uh, others are welcome into their feeders all the time. So remember, safflower is the key for them. They'll eat other stuff too. They'll eat the sunflower chips and black oil sunflower and even millet and things like that. But their true favorite is definitely safflower. So great idea for a program. Thanks for that. Uh, if there's a species you want me to focus on and talk about, let me know. Uh, give us a like, give us a share. And, and please subscribe, hit that notification button, uh, the bell up there, so you know that uh, when I'm going to be on. So thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day.